Hello all, in this today's lecture, which is very important lecture of nephrology, what we are going to discuss is about Alport syndrome. So Alport syndrome is a genetic disorder primarily affects kidneys, ears and eyes. So remember these three organs at any cost, okay, kidneys, ears and eyes are the one which are affected in the Alport syndrome. So it mainly results from a defect in the type 4 collagen. So what is the importance of the type 4 collagen? So type 4 collagen is an essential component of the basement membrane in these particular organs. So because of this, the condition presents as glomerulonephritis, which is often associated with the sensory neural hearing loss because of ears are involved and sometimes ocular abnormalities because of the eye manifestations, okay. So let me talk about the epidemiology. So Alport syndrome is rare, but it is the most common hereditary nephritis. And it affects both males and females, but tend to be more severe in males due to the predominant X-linked pattern of inheritance. And it accounts for a significant number of cases of end-stage renal disease, especially in younger individuals. So whenever you see end-stage renal disease in younger individuals, the first thing should strike to you is the Alport syndrome, okay. So what is the etiology? As I already mentioned about the X-linked inheritance, which is seen in 80% of the cases, which is the commonest form and which is mainly caused by the mutation in COL4A5 gene on X chromosome. So males with this particular mutation are more severely affected and they lack a second X chromosome to compensate. So that is the reason females are typically carriers but can exhibit symptoms depending upon the degree of X chromosome inactivation, right? So this autosomal recessive inheritance is seen in 15% of the cases caused by the mutations in both copies of COL4A3 or COL4A4 genes. And at last, autosomal dominant inheritance is seen in very least number of cases, approximately in 5%, which is a rarer form and caused by a single defective copy of either COL4A3 or COL4A4 genes. So this is what you need to know about the etiology of the Alport syndrome. Now the most important component is the pathophysiology. So what is type 4 collagen guys? We know that the type 4 collagen is an important structural protein in the basement membrane of three important areas mainly like kidneys, cochlea and the eye. So whenever there is a mutation in the genes Coding for its alpha chains of COL4A3, COL4A4 and COL4A5, these genes lead to defective or absent collagen. So what are the manifestations which can be seen in the kidneys, cochlea and the eye? In the kidneys, the glomerular basement membrane, we often call it as GBM, becomes abnormal, thickened in some areas, thinned in others and irregularly split. So this result in glomerulonephritis and leads to progressive kidney damage. So this is what is the pathology what we can see in the kidneys. And what about the cochlea? So in the cochlea, damage to the basement membrane leads to sensory neural hearing loss, usually in the high frequency range. And finally, in the eye, the structural abnormalities cause issues in anterior lenticonus and retinal changes. So these are the pathological features what we can identify in these three structures, right? Now let us move on to the clinical features. So in generally, what do you think is the age of onset of Alport syndrome? So remember guys, age of onset varies significantly ranging from infancy to late adulthood depending upon the severity of the mutation. So whenever we talk about early manifestations of the disease, the early manifestations are in the form of intermittent gross hematuria. Remember this buzzword, there will be intermittent gross hematuria, which is often the first symptom, particularly during infancy or childhood. And whenever we talk about progression of the disease, which means as disease advances, 
So microhematuria becomes persistent followed by proteinuria and symptoms of nephritic syndrome may appear. And finally, the chronic kidney disease ensues, typically culminating in end-stage renal disease by the second and third decade of life. So these are the renal manifestations. When we talk about the sensory neural hearing loss, the sensory neural hearing loss will be progressive and bilateral, affecting high frequencies first and may begin in late childhood or adolescence but not in the infancy. And finally, when we talk about ocular abnormalities, so there will be, I already mentioned you that there will be anterior lenticonus which is a conical protrusion of the lens highly specific for the Alport syndrome and often described as appearing like an oil droplet during ophthalmoscopy, right? And there will be retinal changes such as perimacular flex can also be seen. So these are the clinical features what we can identify in these three typical areas. Now let us move on to the diagnosis part. Remember guys, urine analysis is the first test typically performed because it reveals the persistent microhematuria, mild proteinuria, reflecting the glomerular damage. And routinely blood tests can be done mainly to check elevated blood urea nitrogen and creatinine levels, which mainly indicates the declining kidney function. And another important test will be a kidney biopsy. In this, the light microscopy shows mesangial cell proliferation and there will be sclerosis. And the electron microscopy reveals the classic bosquet weave appearance of the glomerular basement membrane due to alternating thickening and thinning which I already mentioned in the pathological changes. Now if you see the immunofluorescence like studies which may show irregular deposits of IgM, IgG and C3. Now let us move on to the skin biopsy. So skin biopsy is actually a non-invasive method mainly to identify the absent collagen which is type 4 alpha 5 chains and uh, the genetic testing. So genetic testing confirms the diagnosis and distinguishes between the different inheritance patterns. That is the reason we have to do the genetic testing. And obviously we also have to do the audiometry and ophthalmologic examination. So audiometry detects high frequency hearing loss even in asymptomatic patients. And the ophthalmologic examination identifies the anterior lenticonus or other retinal changes. So after finishing the diagnosis part and finally we have to discuss about the treatment and prognosis and first let me talk about the treatment here. So when we talk about the treatment of the Alport syndrome, renal monitoring is very important that is regular assessment of the renal function which is very crucial to detect the progression of the disease. And what is the medical management? We know that in majority of the renal conditions like angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors or uh, angiotensin receptor blockers which are mainly used mainly to reduce proteinuria and also to slow the progression of the kidney damage. And supportive care for the chronic kidney disease includes sodium restriction and diuretics whenever it is needed. Now what are the definitive treatment guys? As we already know about the disease very clearly and also the pathological changes, kidney transplantation is the only curative option for the end stage renal disease. And uh, a potential complication is the development of good pasture syndrome due to the exposure of previously unrecognized collagen antigens in the transplanted kidney. And uh, for the hearing manifestations uh, or features, we can use the hearing aids essential for managing sensory neural hearing loss. And surgical intervention for a significant lenticonus or other ocular abnormalities or surgical correction may improve the vision. So these are the possibilities what we have in the treatment options for the Alport syndrome. And finally, when we talk about the prognosis, guys, the severity and prognosis depends upon the genetic subtype. So the males with X-linked Alport syndrome often develop end-stage renal disease earlier when compared to females. So that's the reason with early intervention and a kidney transplant, patients can achieve an improved quality of life. So finally, to remember the Alport syndrome, you also have to remember can't pee, can't see, can't hear a bee, which means a simple way to remember a triad of kidney, eye and hearing abnormalities of the Alport syndrome. I hope we have covered all the important points of the Alport syndrome, which is must to know for all the different types of examinations. Thank you so much.